I'm Narelle Todd. And I'm Essie Susan Smith. We are the self-publishing author and marketing duo that has sold over 2 million books. But we didn't start out knowing how to sell books. Fast forward past many failed promotions and a lot of lessons learned, you will see how we went from self-publishing newbies to hitting the New York Times bestsellers list and making the USA Today bestsellers list 19 times and counting. We created the Get My Book Out There podcast to give you simple yet effective marketing strategies to increase readership and book sales so you know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, as well as some tips for staying mentally and physically well. Let's get started. Hi, it's Narelle Todd here from Get My Book Out There. And I wanted to come in this podcast and talk with you about the one thing that I see holding authors back from achieving what they want to achieve in their business. It's probably not going to be a big surprise to you, those of you who followed our podcast for over a year or more now, because Susan and I have discussed this at many points. And that one thing that's holding authors back, mindset. I have seen a whole you know, bunch of authors who are really doing some really great things with their marketing. You know, they're really on point, they're in touch, they know who their readers are, and yet they're failing to get traction. And the one thing that I see with that is not working with them to put another marketing tactic into their already busy schedule, but is to actually look at mindset. And to see what is it that's holding them back? You know, what is the belief, that that limiting belief that is stopping them from achieving what they want to achieve with their business? You know, it's been interesting in the way that I have seen authors try and sabotage their own business. And they themselves are not aware of it in many cases until I raise it with them and say, you know, when you were doing this, what, what were you doing? You know, what were you thinking? What was going on? And once it's sort of been made visible or conscious, they then recognize it for what it is. You know, that action was actually a way to stop them from taking another step forward, another, uh, you know, leap forward in their business. So what are some of the things that I've seen around limiting beliefs? One of those is that authors, particularly self-published authors, can only make so much money. There is a stat out there somewhere that says that most author, full-time authors are earning $10,000 um, a year. And one author came to me and said, well, you know, I want to make my living, I want writing to be my full-time uh, career, but I can't do it at $10,000 a year. And I'm like, well, no, I can understand that. But where does the 10,000 come from? And it was like, oh, I saw a figure somewhere in some group and, you know, it's roaming around on social media. I think we need to be mindful of what messages we're reading and what we actually take on board. Uh, my thing to this author was, did you actually go and research that? Is that actually a viable number? And, of course, what happened, uh, she came back and she said, no, with the research that I did, you know, this is what people are saying. It's a bit hard to actually tell, but it's authors can actually earn a, a living wage uh, from their writing, self-published authors. And it's often that we look at something just as very quickly, so say on social media, it's not only social media, but let's just use that. We look on social media, we see this particular figure in this case, $10,000, and we think to ourselves, mm, okay, that must be what people are earning. And that's what we set our goals for what we're going to earn at that kind of limit. I would like to challenge you to have a rethink and to relook at what you have set for your income goals. Where are they? You know, what's the benchmark that you have used? Is it actually real? What actually happens is when I'm coaching authors, I say to them, let's put that stretch figure in. You don't think you can make it, but I know what you can actually achieve. So let's put in a figure and then double it. And often, you know, they, they'll they come with this white face and they'll go, there's no way. And then, of course, they're back in a month, two months, and they go, I actually achieved that amount. And then I go, okay, well, let's increase that by a little bit more and, and a little bit more and so on. And it's just by having someone in their corner just challenging the status quo, asking are they actually looking at the right numbers and are they looking in the right places for the information they need? 
in order to set their, in this case, their goal for what they want to earn uh, in sales for that week or for that month. And once they realise that, hey, you know, maybe I can do that or they've got somebody else in their corner saying, I know this is possible, I see it happen all the time, why don't you give it a go? You know, if you don't make the goal, if you make $50 less than the goal, no big deal, you've, you've made more than you would have made before. So I would encourage you to just check any figures that you're using to base your financial goals on and then just relook at those goals and, and actually say to yourself, if I actually had to make a certain amount of money, would I actually be able to do that? And that may mean that you need to change up some of your marketing. You might need to do things that you don't feel comfortable with in order to get to an income level that's higher than what you're on now. But you know what? You can do that. It is possible. And the more you do things that are uncomfortable, the you know, you're more comfortable you feel, the better you get at it. And so your confidence builds and it just flows through the rest of your business. So firstly, have a look at any financial beliefs you have. Are they right? Could they do with a bit of a, a tweak? And then have a look at what you've set for yourself in your business and maybe you, you might increase the amount that you've set for your monthly goal. Another way that I see people uh, sabotage themselves is by doing just crazy things. Many authors have a marketing plan. And let's say it's a new release. They have their new release plan. They're working the plan and then all of a sudden they can feel the next step is coming. They can feel the growth about to hit. They can feel that they're going to get more popular and that they're going to sell more books. And you know that gets really scary and they get fearful. And so they start to backpedal. They stop doing everything that's on their plan or they may... Um, decide not to run some ads or they may decide that mm, you know it doesn't matter this time I'll, I'll do a certain tactic next time it's things like that that are going to actually um, prevent your growth and usually you know in your gut when you're doing that you know when you're pulled back you know when you're not playing to your optimum you know when you're not giving your personal best so be aware of those signs and whenever you feel yourself you know, saying what's going on here, you aren't doing, you're actually, this is a cop out, you aren't doing what you should be doing, what you know you need to do in order to grow, then there's a limiting belief there. So have a look at what is it, you know, go and do a bit of a deep dive into what's actually holding you back. And once you get to bring that limiting belief into the light, um, it then loses its power and you'll find that you will do the activities that you need to do in order to take you to the next level. Another way that I see authors sabotage themselves is once they start to get a little bit of success and they've got some money coming in, they literally don't know what to do with that money and so they go and spend it. <laughs> now spending money is not a bad thing because that's what keeps our economy going. Spending money is good. You know, some uh, readers spent their money to buy your books which enabled you to have this money. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. But if you have set a budget and you know that you need to invest that money back into your business and in the first couple of years, that's what you're going to be doing with money that comes in. You're going to be investing it back into your business. If you spend that money somewhere else on things that aren't business related or that are you know, frivolities in your business that aren't actually going to help the bottom line, that aren't in your budget, for the resources that you need. Uh, an example would be uh, an author who set aside money to create book covers and um, things got a little bit real when she actually achieved that money and earned the money in order to invest in new book covers um, and she went and spent it on, um, let's say, some fun stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't work-related. So I want you to have a think about where are you spending your money? Do you actually have a budget? Do you actually have a plan for what you're going to do with your money that you get into the business? It's much easier to budget when you don't have money in some ways because you know that you've got a limited amount of money that you can spend and so the decisions are somewhat easier because they're limited. You can choose from A or B. You can't choose from A, B, C, D and E. So when you therefore get money into the business, is when you start to make those kind of decisions that actually sabotage your growth because suddenly you've got some money, you've got a bit of discretionary spending happening 
and you may very well go, I know I budgeted for A and B, but I'm actually going to go and spend it on you know, F and G simply because I can. And then you wake up the next day and you go, oh, no, I needed that money for ads. I needed that money for book covers. I needed that money uh, to pay for some marketing. I needed that money for a new editor. I needed that money you know, for a website upgrade that is desperately needed. So firstly, if it's you find yourself doing something like that, make sure that you have a budget so that you have very clear guidelines on where to spend your money when the money is starting to come in and you're starting to see your income grow. Um, be strict with yourself. Spend it on those things first that you've budgeted for, the things that are going to grow your business. If there's money left over, then certainly have you know a little bit of fun with it. But make sure you get the vital things paid for first before you spend it on some of those luxuries. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, if it's tweaked anything in you and you thought, oh my gosh, that's me, I've been doing something like that to sabotage my business. Know that you, know, you aren't alone. Every business owner does things like that at some stage in their business and more than once. But when you're aware of it, you can then take action to make sure that you don't do those things that you actually address the limiting beliefs and you change them around into more positive and affirming beliefs that actually help you grow your business so remember mindset is the thing number one thing that's actually holding you back from where you want to be be very strong in your mindset grow it be resilient and the growth will come most definitely see ya hey thanks for joining us today you know we've got way more information we want to share with you to increase your book sales. So please come and join me at facebook.com. Get my book out there.